I don't know what the hell gun you're talking about. I'm talking about the piece you flashed around. The one that got you into all the trouble. I didn't bring any gun to school. What'd you do, threaten the Prescott kid with your finger? Look, the school wanted me out of there, so they made up that crap about the gun, all right? I know where you're coming from, Colin, a lot more than you think. Bunch of country club kids dissed you, right? Made you feel like you were trespassing on their turf. So you go to visit Prescott, get a little respect, but then things get out of hand, right? I was home all night. Your mother said you weren't skating. That was before, around 7. I got home in time for the Knicks game. Anybody see you at the rink? I don't know. I didn't look, all right? That's enough. He's just a kid. He needs to go home now. <sighs> yeah, right. Just a kid. Kid with an attitude and a half. Grow up on the Upper East Side, you get a Tiffany spoon in your mouth. Grow up in Inwood, you get that. Kid with a short fuse and a gun. Bad luck for Mr. Prescott. Maybe bad luck for us. No gun, no eyewitness, and his parents say he was home. Right, and they've got to be telling the truth. Yeah. Thanks. Forensics found gunpowder residue on the kid's right glove. Colin Harrigan, you're under arrest for the murder of William Prescott. What? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you do say can and will be used against you in a court of law. I doubt Mr. McCoy's stormtroopers even bothered to read the search warrant. Specified a gun, not a pair of gloves. Mr. Dwyer should keep up with his own reading. The courts allow the seizure of any relevant evidence. In what universe? People versus Baker, Your Honor. The police were looking for a knife. They took a bloodstained sweater instead. The court suppressed it. And 16 years later, under People v. Watson, that same sweater would have been allowed. Watson covers obviously incriminating evidence found in plain view. The gloves were neither. In his opinion, Your Honor. Your Honor, what makes this search especially odious is the fact the warrant was predicated on false information. Weren't the officers told your client threatened a schoolmate with a gun? It was a lie. The officers had a subpoena Dukas take them to search the school files. If they'd gotten off their duffs and actually looked at the files, they would have found a copy of this letter. It was sent three weeks ago by the headmaster to Colin's father. It states that it was an unnamed student and not my client who had the gun. Well, we're splitting hairs here, Your Honor. According to this, the student said he got the gun from Colin Harrigan. What matters is what the headmaster told the police. They had no reason to doubt his word. They acted in good faith. Mr. McCoy, my cat coughs up sweeter smelling goop than the search warrant. Motion to suppress granted. They have no other evidence, Your Honor. You're two for two, Mr. Dwyer. Motion to dismiss granted. I had no idea. Vaughn had been threatened. My husband never said a word about it. Dad didn't want you to worry. Why didn't you tell the police? I was afraid. Afraid of who? Isn't that obvious? He's afraid of Colin Harrigan. We know that Colin didn't threaten you with a gun. It was another boy. We want to know his name. Dr. Penton told me not to discuss it with anybody, especially outsiders. Vaughn, tell Mr. McCoy who it was. It was Barkley. Stuart Barkley. Nathan Barkley's boy? Oh, my God. He roughed me up a couple of times. I told her third form master. And after that, Stuart threatened you with a gun? Yeah. I was afraid to go back to school. He and Harrigan have this gang, five or six boys from the hockey team. We call them wannabes. They want to be like Colin, because he walks the walk. They, they think he's so cool, especially Stuart. Stuart will do anything to impress Harrigan. It was Harrigan's gun. The fact that it passed through my son's hands is irrelevant. He was the last person seen in possession of a murder weapon, Mr. Barkley. That strikes me as relevant. When you were finished waving it in Vaughn Prescott's face, what did you do with it? Colin ditched it. Where? I don't know. He didn't tell me. After he was expelled, did you have any conversation with him about Vaughn Prescott or his father? No. I'm not allowed to talk to him at all. 
Stuart, once you leave here, if I find out you've lied to me... Don't you threaten my son. No one, and that includes your father and your school, will be able to protect you. Do you understand that? Come on, Stuart. Mr. McCoy is finished with you. They're all full of it. I didn't call anybody. You know what? We can pull your phone records. We can prove you made those calls, Stuart. Even if he did make a few crank calls... Crank calls? He made threats, Mr. Barkley. According to you. But I guarantee it was Harrigan who put him up to it. He and his father, they're all alike with their Irish temper. They lose control, and the next thing oh, you know, so you have a murder. Harrigan did it because he's a Mick? Detective Logan is a Mick. I'm a Mick, sir. And if you don't shut up, I'll lose control and throw you out of the room. Take that cap off. Your tough guy act is not going to save you. Our witness puts you in the park with Colin and the gun a half an hour before Mr. Prescott was shot. We didn't have a gun. I swear. Where'd you go after you left Woolman Rink? We went home. Where exactly did you walk to? I walked Colin to Columbus Circle, then he took his subway. The skate geek is lying. I didn't have any gun. And what about those black kids? You just said boo and they took off? I just lifted my jersey and showed them the corner of my hip pad. You know, in my hockey pants. It looks like a gun butt. That's what they saw and that's what the other guy saw. Tell me exactly how you went home from the ring. We walked over to Columbus Circle and then I hopped the A train to Dykeman. That's it? You went straight home? Well, you had your chance. I just finished talking to Stuart Barkley. He has a different story. He doesn't skip the part about going to the Prescott house. What specifically did he tell you? Everything I need to know. Stu wouldn't tell you, squat. We didn't do anything. His statement's being typed up as we speak. After he signs it, you can read it on your way to Rikers. Wait a minute. We want to talk to our lawyer in private. You got a confession from Barkley? Did I say that? You certainly implied it. There's no law against lying to a suspect. And you probably miss the good old days before Miranda. Hey, if anybody wants to hear some of this, I could accidentally hit the intercom button. That's what my old man would have done in the good old days before Miranda. Mr. Harrigan wants to make a statement. He's aware of his rights. I've advised him against it, but this is what he wants. I did it. I shot Prescott. Mr. Harrigan, I know what you're I trying to I don't care what Stuart Barkley said. I shot Prescott. He ruined everything I worked for. Yeah, that's all fine, except for the gunpowder on your son's gloves. Those are my gloves. Colin wears them sometimes. <sighs> Prescott's secretary told me what time he gets home. I wanted to talk to him about Colin. He didn't give a crap. He said Colin had his one chance. He said that's the only chance people like us deserve. I shot him. You don't believe me. I'll take you to the gun. I put it in there, in a bag. Thirty-two charter arms undercover. That's it. Read him his rights. Thomas Harrigan, you're under arrest for the murder of William Prescott. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used. 